Hi guys and welcome back to another tutorial by myself, Martin Pickering, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the door sequencers available inside many of the Powerbox units. So let's get straight in. Okay, so this time, before we go into the actual nitty gritty of programming the power box, let's actually try and understand exactly what it is that we want to achieve inside the power box. So how we need to introduce the information so that the servos, pistons, electro valves, or whatever it is that control our gear doors can allow our gears to come down and up again faultlessly in the order that we want them to with the required gaps. Now, it may seem daunting, but as I'll show you in this tutorial, it's actually relatively simple. We just need to break it down into each one of the steps that the power box needs to control. In other words, which gear door opens first, which gear door opens last, when the gear is supposed to go up and down, and if those doors are supposed to stay open or closed after the gear has done its thing. So, let's get on to it. Okay, so there are three different preset styles of sequencer inside the Mercury and basically any power box which has a gear sequencer inside it, such as the Royale or the Champion. The first one of those is the simple one, where you have one set of gear doors and one retract. So, gear doors open, retract comes down, and then vice versa. Option two is where one of those gear doors closes again. And option three is where all of those gear doors close again. Let's go through the first option first to show you exactly how the Mercury thinks and how it processes each one of those tasks. So, option number one. We only have the retracts themselves and gear doors. There are going to be two steps to the process. So let's split this in half. First one is going to be when we want to open the retracts. And the second one is when we want to close them. So in the first scenario, retract starts closed and we want to open, and the other one they start open and we want to close. So with everything closed, first thing we need to open are the gear doors, followed then by the retracts. So the first step is obviously to drop the gear doors followed by dropping the retracts. Simple, right? So, in the process that the screen shows, which we'll go through again in a moment, it will ask you to, in each one of the steps, plug in to the appropriate ports on the power box the corresponding channels and where you want them to 
start and finish. Because of course it's not enough saying that we want the gear doors to come down. We need to tell the power box exactly where to start and where to finish on each one of the steps. Not only that, but how long is it going to take to get from here to here? Okay, so we have, let's say, minus 100% to plus 100%. We want to start at the beginning, obviously, so we start at zero seconds. And let's say that the gear doors are going to take two seconds to open. So it goes from zero to two seconds. We only want the retracts to open after this step has finished. So we need this to start at whatever starting point it has. So let's call it, let's say minus 97%, just to be difficult. And then it goes to plus 100. And these values are of course only indications. Your own situation will need its own values. And then the retracts, we also need them to start and stop in the appropriate places. So we want it to start only after this one's finished. This one finishes at two seconds. I'm going to leave a gap and say, I want you to start after three seconds. And I'm going to give you sec seven seconds in which to lower the retracts. So stop at 10 seconds. What we've just created are basically two steps which Powerbox call tasks. So this is going to be task one and task two. Why? Because that's the order we want them to, to happen in. This is exactly what the wizard is going to do for you. All that you need to do is make sure that the right channels are plugged into the right places and that you have the right start and stop values. The times will be orig originally preset when using types 1, 2 or 3. However, you can change them as required. So this is more or less what's going to happen. But from this, we can actually pull out exactly what the screen is going to show us in our power box. So let's actually just see what that would look like. So we have task one for opening. Powerbox call this type A. Closing will all be type B. A. Sorry, didn't do that very well, but that's an A. <laughs> and these will be B and B. Okay, so retracts. The retracts always go in to the first port on this side of the power box, which is channel, in this case, C. So channel on the power box, channel C. We want it to start at minus 100.
I want it to stop at plus 100. We want it to start at 0 seconds. Fractions are also used, so it would be 0, 0.0 seconds. I want it to stop. at two seconds. And there you have it. This is the exact screen that we're going to be able to find in our Mercury or other power box with door sequencer. See if you can fill out the second task. Gear doors go on the rest of the line normally having the front gear doors in the first two and the main gear doors in the remaining two. So I'll give you, a, I'll give you the first hint channel for all of them. I'm going to put them all into the first available one which will be channel F and see if you can uh, finish these before I do. I'll give you a head start. Start, stop, start, stop. Ready? Okay. Start at minus 97%. Stop at plus 100. Start at 3 seconds. Stop at 10 seconds. Did you beat me? Hopefully, if you have, this is working. Okay, great. So, one thing to point out is that our transmitters always show our servo travels in percentage form. However, Powerbox use the actual position of the servo, or whatever component it is that we're using. What that means is rather than showing 100% or minus 97 or minus 100%, what it's going to show us is something like plus 1200 up to plus 2200. At the end of the day it's the same thing. Play with the value, watch your servo move until it reaches the point where you need it to be. As for closing, what will happen is the power box, because this is a little bit of a chore, especially if you end up doing it manually as opposed to through the wizard, what it does is it actually automatically copies your A task and reverses it in your B task. So what that means is it knows that when the retracts are open, and you want to close them, it's going to be doing this. So first thing is reversing this task, so retracts have to go up, and then the gear doors have to go up. It knows the timings, so it knows that this one has taken 7 seconds, and this one has taken 2. Because this is now the first task, it's going to go over 7 seconds, but starting from 0. So 0 to 7, it's going to leave a gap, and then it's going to have 2 seconds, so it's going to go from 8 to 10, because that one also lasts 2 seconds. Like so. Again, it's starting at plus 100 and needs to go to minus 97 and it starts at plus 100 and needs to finish 
at minus 100. This will all be done for you. If you ever need to manually modify any of these, I would always recommend just modifying them here, because any changes that happen here will automatically be swapped over to here. If you make any changes here, and then here, when you update the first task, the A tasks, they will override the B tasks. Okay, so that was how the first set works. Which basically, as we said, for opening, firstly, all the front doors and main doors open, followed by the retracts. Then for closing, retracts go up and all the gear doors go up. Now, these can be on a Y lead, on a single valve, or in any manner, or you can have four different outputs, two for the nose and two for the mains, without any kind of problem and have them all running one, two, three or four tasks, however may be needed, and they will simply follow that process when set in mode one. Okay, option number two. One set closes. So this would be, say, when after this process has already happened, you would want the main doors, main retract doors, to close again. Uh, such as on a Viper jet, where they cover up the uh, hole left by the wheel. So, everything would come down first, then the retracts, and then the main doors would come back up again. Now because main doors are different to the front doors in this one, what we're actually going to have is separate tasks because they need to have different channels so that we can control that only the main doors close again after the retracts are fully extended. So on this occasion, here we actually have four tasks. One, two, three, four. And then automatically the reverse happens here once again. So main doors, retracts go up, and then all the gear doors close again. So this one has two tasks, this one has four tasks. Each one of those four tasks is identical to the two tasks that we showed you in the previous diagram, except adding two more to it. Just program where you want it to start, where you want it to finish, and how long you want it to take. And then finally, we have where we want all doors to close. So this is where not only do we have the mains close again, or the nose close again, but all of them closing again, despite the landing gear actually being out. So we're going to split it again, one for out, one for in. The exact same process again. So all the, the gear doors need to open so that the retracts can come out 
and then all of the gear doors close again. Now on this occasion we can actually have these two operate on their own because both for opening as for closing they both operate together or we can have them as separate tasks which would give us added freedom if we wanted for some of them to have a slightly longer delay or just to be a little bit slower or anything like that. So this could work with either three tasks or five tasks. And then of course once again you would have the reverse happen. So firstly all the gear doors would need to open before the retracts go back in and have all the gear doors close again. Not too complicated once you can get your head around it. All that we're doing is breaking it down into each movement that we need. These are the three most standard options for retracts and gear doors. Of course you can complicate this to any degree that you wish. You can have each one of these operating at different speeds or have only the main doors start moving after the front doors have finished their movement. Anything that you need. But all of that beyond these three basic steps would need to be done manually as opposed to through the wizard. Because remember, the wizard are just for these three steps. Simple. Okay guys, so here we have our setup for today. We have our retracts, specifically we're going to be using electron retracts for the example, and two servos which are going to act as our gear doors. We have our main gear doors, so the ones on the wing, and our nose gear door, obviously for the front of the plane, the nose wheel. So we need to go into the Mercury, find door sequencer, and we're going to go straight into our setup assistant. First step, move gear switch to teach channel. So we're going to flip our transmitter and you can see that it's already detected which channel that is. So go to OK. Select motion sequence. Okay, there are three basic modes for setting up the gear door sequencer in the wizard. The first one is simply one set of retracts that open before the retracts drop and that go up after the retracts have been retracted. Mode 2, which is exactly the same, but after that process also closes one of the gear doors, normally the ones on the wing, or can also be the nose gear, so nose uh, gear door. On mode 3, where after the process all gear doors close again. Now if your model doesn't fit in with either of those three modes you'll need to do it manually. However in most cases this will work. Even in those cases where it won't work it can still be a good idea to figure out which one is closest, use that one and then simply fine-tune or adjust it later on in the expert menu. Let's go into a little bit more detail as to how the modes work before going any further. Okay, so we're going to do mode one. We're going to keep it nice and simple. Just the two tasks. One for the retracts and one for the doors. So select mode one. 
Connect a retract valve to output C. So I need to connect my retract to output C in my power box. Press one or two to set the down position. So we need to toggle the position until it is down. So in landing position. So we can just move this. You can see the numbers changing there. Up to whatever position we need. Okay. So minus 100 has my retracts out as instructed by the screen. So, okay, that'll do. Connect the retract valve to output C and have the up position. So that is now the up position. It's actually done that automatically for me. Plus 100, brilliant. Okay, connect front door to output F. So front door, that's my main, so I'm gonna use this servo. And I'm going to connect that to F. And I'm going to simply move that to what I'm going to call my closed position. Okay? Numeric va percentage value, whatever it needs, done. Okay. For the open position, which is going to be the other way, just going to move it again to whatever position I need for the open position. There we go. Now normally, for type one, as we're doing, that would be it, because you'll normally have all of your gear doors on a Y lead, because they're all working on the exact same timing. If, however, you wanted to or needed to have them separately, despite using mode one where they all work together, or as you would need for steps, or well, types two or three, you can have different channels for each one of the doors. You can have a total of two doors for the nose, and two doors on the mains. So we've done the first one. It goes now to the second one of the front outputs. It tells me to connect it to output I, which is the middle one. In my case, I'm only using one, so I don't need to do anything with this screen. I can just ignore it completely. Skip it, both on the closed position and also on the open position. Now, right door. Now, right door, left door, it doesn't know which one's which. It's just to try and help you understand what it is that you're doing at the time. So, main gear, connect it to L. Okay, so I'm going to connect that to L as well there, like so. And I need to put set, just as I did before, the closed position. Okay, so I'm going to move that to the closed position, which we're going to have it facing that way, as before. Set OK. And now do the open position, which, as before, we want it to be this way. That'll do. Set it to whatever numeric value you need for it to have the door fully open or fully closed. Okay, it now gives me the option to do the same again for the second main door, which again, in my case, isn't necessary, so I can skip it completely, as there are no values of interest to me. It's now configuring, and we're done. It's now reverting to the position of my transmitter. So if I flip the switch from everything being open to 
the retract. Just going to close the retract first. And then close those doors. And the same in, ver in reverse. It's going to automatically have figured out the timing and it's now going to open the doors and then the retract itself. In types 2 and types 3 it does the same. It automatically programs some timings for you and just follows your travel endpoints. Now what happens if those times or timings aren't quite right or the entire tasks don't fit in with your requirements. Then we've done the setup assistant, we now simply go to the expert menu. This is a lot less scary than it seems. Okay, so if we go back to that image that we had previously in which you beat me, you actually beat me to filling out the screen on paper, all that we have now is that exact screen put onto the power box based on our setup wizard that we filled out a moment ago. Now, in my example, we were using just two tasks because we had a Y lead. Now, because the power box tries to keep things simple, it doesn't know if you're using a Y lead. You may or may not have used all four of those outputs as they were available. So it's going to create a task for each one of those. Simply ignore the ones which haven't been filled out because nothing's happening, nothing's connected. You don't need them. So here we have action up to down as opposed to down to up or A and B as we mentioned previously. Task one, it could be one, two, three, four, however many you need. The start position, the stop position, which as mentioned, rather than being percentages, are now actually measured in position of the servo. And start time and stop time as before. So if we want to have a quick look through first, make sure we see exactly what we have. So task one is a two second task. Task two, we didn't program as we know. Task three is the other two second task. Task four is the retract. Task five, nothing, six, nothing, seven, nothing, and eight, nothing. So we go back, task one. I actually want that to be quicker. I don't want it to take two seconds. So simply change that down to one second and there you have it. You want to see the difference? Okay, so retract comes down. They're the same. As you can see, that one arrived a lot quicker because it only took one second as opposed to two. And then the retract. So if you wanted them both to be the same, We go to task three, which is the one for the other server that we connected. Change that down to one. And now in that process, they will now take one second to come back as opposed to the two seconds previously. See, a lot faster. And now the retract itself. Okay guys, so that's the end of another tutorial. Hopefully now you can program your gear doors however you wish, be it with one of the wizards or manually. Either way you can get some great results. If you found the video helpful, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you aren't already, and comment if you have any questions. And remember to stay tuned for the next video.